to pick you guys. This hangout is now on air live. And I have here, this is Open Up and Bleed, KTRN Radio, 1630 AM. You can also tune in on our Google Hangout. The link is way too long. They gotta figure that out. Don't you guys think they need to figure out a way where I could just say www.634.whatever.com? I just mean like, I just mean like, I just mean like, in theory, yes. Oh, you, gotta, you can figure that out? Well, I'm an engineer, so I know why that's hard. You're an engineer for what? Like, um, it's okay. computers? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then don't you find it ironic that we're using computers right now, at this very moment, to discuss this? It is slightly ironic, yes. Okay, and what is your specialty? So, I, 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 so I'm excited. No, well, well I, I didn't know. I had no idea the sort of uh, resource we had at our disposal. Because there is, correct me if I'm wrong, Amika, you can step in too as an outside party. But the relationship between Darius and myself is new. Yes. We have just met. It is, Objectively, it is yeah. very recent. Yeah. Uh, it is very no, it's okay. It's recent. Yeah. And, um, wow. Yeah, exactly. I had no idea that you worked with the very tools which we use here on Open Up Weed to transmit the show. So, if I wanted, okay, maybe the solution in itself is uh, stupid. Of what I said. But what would be the right way? Like, I want to tell people to visit this hyperlink, which is a long URL, and watch this Google Hangout. <laughs> so the way, so the way things are done now, yeah, is basically like they'll have a URL from their right. And yeah, right. I know that. Alley, Bitly, whatever. Right. You do that, and then that's what you say. Okay. So you'll uh, say like that. Is, but, but let's, let's, let's get with the real world here, okay? Right, right. I asked my good friend, Mika Marple, to meet me 15 minutes before the show yeah. because the show has a slim, hour-long time slot. Yes. For reasons unbeknownst to me that I respect, I have no problem with these reasons. The mics in your face make you got to do something like that. You gotta maybe, maybe you got to sit higher. The ratings are going to Yeah, the ratings, because you need, you need an intelligent, good-looking woman. Um, to and then you want to tilt maybe the mic up. You can tilt the arm down with the mic up. Oh, oh yeah. Well, yeah. If you actually position it the right way, that's exactly what all the quote unquote pathetic men watching this want. They want a sort of phallic object. Um, no, this is a sex show. Guys. No, no. Oh wait. So I was gonna say right. So then life intervenes. Life intervenes because Miko was supposed to meet me at eight forty-five. Right. For you guys are having a great dinner. You guys are also potentially new friends or old friends. I don't know. Whatever kind of friends you are, you're not allowed to talk about. And so you ended up meeting me at like eight fifty-eight, which which didn't necessarily give us enough time to set up the show properly. Right. Oh, uh, oh. And so if I have the time, maybe I could have done a bitly shorten <laughs> bookmark. You see where I'm going with this, right? Yes. But I didn't have the time. So what is the way? You know, I should have Instagrammed about this. I should have tweeted about this because you know people want to know what Mika has to say. I'm going to get photos here right now uh, to make this show relevant. I mean, of course, I, I see. I have um, a counter, a viewer counter here in my here. Yeah. And do you guys have it on your side? Uh, no. Bottom right. Do you have that? No. So you're not aware then that we have thousands of viewers right now. <laughs> Did you buy them? What? Did you buy them? No, I don't believe you can do that. I think in a Google, <laughs> in a Google sort of environment, you can't do that. Okay, that's, that's wow, that looks really. Oh, cool. Isn't that like all celebrities do now? They go on these talk shows and take selfies with themselves. I well, it's not oh, something guys. I took a picture of you guys. For self, <laughs> with person I am. Um, Isn't that what all celebrities do now? Take pictures of other people. <laughs> no, they take all pictures of them. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. I'm a celebrity. Yeah, I think I'm a celebrity. Oh, Is that what you're trying oh, to say? Nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, see, now I'm gonna write in my I'm gonna write in my Instagram. Tune in now. But no one's gonna know how. Even right. if I put the link in the Instagram, you can't click in the Instagram comment. Right. You have to you say, look at my profile. That's what people do. I don't think this is like people, an interview show. <laughs> no, this is this is a show. Are you talking about your problems? No, no, no. This is good. This is, 
No, no this, this is, is interesting. interesting. Okay, okay, fine. 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 You're right. You're right. What's it supposed to be about her? No, it's about, about you guys. So how did you guys meet? Are you old friends or new friends? We're relatively new friends. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, it, and 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 is it correct that you live in the Bay Area? I used to live in the Bay. I live in LA, live in uh, Washington. Wow, welcome, welcome. Do you live up on a hill? Yeah, I do actually. Do you like that? Yeah, I you do. You do? Yeah, because I like the cycle. So oh. I like I like at the end of my ride home this uh, steady climb. You know, Are you gonna ride a bike home right now? Uh, no, I, I, I won't actually. So uh, you're not? No, not, <laughs> I'm not doing it tonight because I did it twice today already. Oh wow! So yeah. to work and from work. Right, right. Well, and then I had to go to the DMV because I had to get money. To Do you need stay. to get a license to ride a bicycle? Because <laughs> that would be truly. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you can't well, you can't get it. Yeah, on a bike. It's kind of bullshit, to be honest. Well, we'll tell it to the judge, Darius. Well, hopefully I never end up with the judge in that context. Yeah. I don't end up there because cars don't really feel like this. So. Well, how do you think? Well, how do you feel about riding a pack? Well, as I was waiting for you guys, this is a long way. I saw all pack of riders. Do you yeah. like that? Do you participate in uh, such events? No, no. I, I usually <laughs> ride solo. Mm -hmm. Actually, pass. But not always. You get sucked in? Usually, in the, in the bay, I'm more likely to get sucked in. Yeah. There's just so many. More so many. Here, it's more like you have to plan it out. It's part, it has to be in your schedule book. Right, right. You can't just find a pack. Right, right. You can't. Yeah. And, like, well, the, the pack thing is awkward because the way a lot of lanes are in LA, they don't just have the bike sign on the road. Yeah, they don't actually make a lane. It means you can ride them. One bike. <laughs> yeah. At a time. They Single file. They would put like 10 bikes on the road. You know, okay. well, they, no, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not speaking hate. I'm just I'm curious about your opinion. I am scared of riding a bike. I was scared. raised it is yeah. to be scared of things. Yeah. And so I believe that any physical thing besides just like me in a room by myself could kill me. Right. So I am scared to ride bike alone in public with group whatever. <clears throat> when I see the groups riding, yeah, I don't agree with their style decisions. Right. I don't I agree with their music choice. But they're blasting no, music. Some groups do. The one past five blasted, and right. you know the, the pack goes for like you know a few hundred meters. They, from beginning to end, it's a snake. Right. And the beginning of the snake has only faint understanding of the back of the snake and vice versa. And in the entire snake, there's four or five boom boxes. Right. And none of the choices I heard tonight, whether it was a high energy dance music or more generic black. <laughs> or, 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 or something more of a contemporary hip hop. Right. right. I didn't feel like I wanted to be part of that. But then again, I don't want to be part of any pack. And I feel like, see, that, Derek, I feel like you're an individualist. Is that right? I mean, I don't subscribe to like what libertarianism usually is. Mm. Well, you are from the Bay Area, huh? That is like a sort of like buzz thing there. Well, with like Peter Thiel and all those. Right. Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg, is that what you said? Zuckerberg. I mean, you heard it here first, guys. <laughs> Derek, what's your last name just so I can get in trouble? Riddell. L I M I D D L O. Yes. Derek. That's my real last name. Riddell, yeah. I don't know Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. So technically, I can't say fuck you. But you have an F book profile. Yeah, I do. No longer, actually. Yeah, I just heard it was removed. No, no it's, that's my real name. So no, that's, that's what I'm saying. Name. You literally have just been removed from Facebook. Out to thousands of viewers. Um, uh, yeah, oh, just went up. Yeah. Five digits. Five. Guys, we just went from 9999 to 10001. You're a coder. What does that mean? 10001. Does that mean anything in binary? Um, in binary, 1001. <laughs> no, no, 100. One ten thousand and one. That's how many viewers. Ten thousand and one. <laughs> it means like no, no. In binary, it means what? Seventeen. It means what? Seventeen. That is it. 
<laughs> this is boring. Okay, why don't we get into the wild and fucking crazy world of Mika Marble. Hey Mika, welcome to the show. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry that you're so bored by the subject matter that we have here. Why don't you entertain us with your incredible life? What did you do today? Um, I signed up for this anime expo. Are you going to go in cosplay uh, yeah, mode? Yeah. What is your cosplay going to be? Well, it was either going to be Sailor Moon. We still have time. Or Daenerys. Daenerys. That's yeah. uh, from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Did you see the season finale? No, I've actually only seen season one. You can't dress up as Game of Thrones for anime. No, it's just Again, Darius coming with his <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like the reason that Mika is such a successful and notable figure in the art world is because she knows how to think outside of the rule box. Okay, uh, most uh, niche uh, communities, whether they be uh, gamers or uh, uh, comic book fans or um, art world, there's a, a set of rules. Right. I don't know if you're familiar with this term, Darius, but once in a while, um, a notable disruptor, okay, will come into this community and um, operate under their own rules. And Mika Markle may be one of these disruptors. At the anime expo. She in won't. life, wherever what? she goes, no, she has a dirty, slimy trail oh, of disruption, <laughs> of innovation. <laughs> yeah, that she, that she's, she's kind of a slug, kind of just like a disgusting slug. <laughs> and, you see, this is why we have the cameras in this show. Because yeah. <laughs> on air, we can see <laughs> slug. Okay. Thank so you. are you excited to yeah. be Denaris? Well, I mean, the reason... <laughs> why don't you combine the two outfits? Sailor Moon Denari. Yeah. Cool. 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 Yeah. Cool. yeah. Cool. No, but what's exciting is I'm going with this art who like spends her time being here in China. So right. I'm actually doing work. I'm actually working. Uh, that isn't exciting. <laughs> what is exciting about that? Just because you get to show her, like, and like this and is a man. <laughs> no. They probably did this first no, in China. I, they invented this first in East Asia, these sort of uh, conventions I'm where people sure cosplay in Japan. I'm this, this advisor is the one who got me to go in the first place, and I'm bringing on the artist. So I'm going to turn it all. Oh, okay, okay. So you just announced on air live yeah. how strategic your whole life is. Yeah. Because a lot of people going to this, they're doing it for fun. They're doing it for passion of the nerdy thing that they're into. I don't know what yeah. that is. Yeah, it's for strategy. But, but for you, everything is just a manipulative game that has tons of ulterior motives. Sort of. Do you? That's, that's, that's such a cop out answer. Sort of. No. To a question like that. <clears throat> that's. Well, a I mean, in a no, way. I think I think that's honest. Sort sort of. It, it's honest. Because a lot of people, I think, would want to answer. No, no, Eugene, you completely misunderstand. Don't misconstrue. I just right. want to have fun with my artist and the art of Yeah. No. It's, I'm more true. <coughs> also, I'm more honest. You're not gonna mix business and pleasure. She is. Business. I mean, what is she? It is, but my she has saying she makes it business, business of pleasure. Oh. So, but but let's, let's let's be frank. That here's why here's why I like you, Mika, as a friend for me. He hasn't said why. He said thanks already. He acknowledged me as a friend, <laughs> <laughs> and that's important. That's the There's very few people that I would acknowledge as a friend, and sometimes I say I say. I, Sometimes I say it. It's true. Sometimes I say to Joan, I said, "What? No." No, no, I don't say that. I'm just kidding. Um, or do I? Um, or do I? Um, I, I like. I don't think you view me as business. No, but we have done business. We've done business. Yeah, that's on there. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't view me, guys. No, you're guys. Genuine. But it's not like we want to possibly do business sometime in the future. I would love to do business with you because I think you have a great business mind. 
And Darius, I don't know, you guys just met really, so I'll just give you a tip. He's got a great business. Yeah. Guys, could you, I'm going to pose a question to you and I'm going to leave you for 12 seconds, okay? Figure out for me on June 16th, 2017, give me one sentence. Think about it. Of what's going on in your life? That, that, that's exactly what you and Eric. June 17th. Think about it. June, June, no, June 16th. June 16th. June 17th. Think about it. I'll be back in a second. Oh, are you watching the show? Okay, I'm closing. It is mine. Is this yours, Mika? I feel like I have this smart water. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, is that mine? Somewhere in this place is, I think it's mine. Okay. I'm back. Quote unquote, pitches. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. an ad for pitch perfect. <laughs> We're back, pitches. <laughs> so, Darius, you want to go first? I think we need Mika. Mika needs more time. And for one second, you do know? Yeah. Darius, do you know what? Um, one sentence. Well, if you're, if you're not ready, Mika will go. Yeah, I'm not ready. Okay. Mika, to you. Yeah. On June, oh, start it like yeah, this, yeah, though. Yeah. On June 16th, 2017, I will be. And then say your thing. Oh, wait, no, I need more. Go ahead. Okay, I'll go first. Okay, okay, now I know what I, I know. What All right, Mika goes first. Okay. I okay, so uh, June 16, 2017. Right. I will be a millionaire. <laughs> I'm serious. You could have said a millionaire. That's what I said. A millionaire. Uh, I said I will be. Yeah, yeah, I, that's what yeah. I said. Yeah, that is what I said. I will be a millionaire. No, you know, he said it. He's in various conversations about the word A. Yeah, so I will be Or a very like stereotype Asian character in any any movie. Me, that I'm the type of person who would do that. Stereotype I don't think you're the type. <laughs> what is the time? Anyway, okay, so, so before we begin to you, if you are 10 cents back of your pocket, um, Mika, yeah. do you think it is troubling yeah. that you are invested in business yeah. and in two years, one thing that you know for sure that you foresee yourself in is a certain, certain financial strap, yeah. yet your professive specialty or yeah. passion, or the thing that you dedicate most of your time and life to, yeah. is selecting and promoting art, True. right? Like uh, your passion, and Kurt, stop me at any point if, if I'm wrong here, is to <clears throat> locate, discover artists, People whose goal are to express their personal take on reality in a way that is innovative, potentially highly critical, and and maybe even destructive towards yeah. the uh, power structure and status quo. Yeah. And yet, a large part of your focus in our discussion here, has been about money and business. Now, if I pulled the artists, they might be excited and grateful and thankful that someone who is focused on business is going to bat for them. But I ask you, do you see any problems? with this sort of focus on money in relation to expression, art, critique, societal subversion. <laughs> yeah, of course there are problems. But then there's a lot of opportunities. 
I mean, I think art is just not about changing pace. Like, things that are subversive just become like consumed and like very quickly. Do you? And I think there's a lot of financial potential in actually like getting behind disruptive forces. So I don't necessarily think that it's actually exclusive. You can you make a lot of money. But at the same time, it's hard to be really radical. Yeah. And okay. I mean, obviously, we are, are sort of totally think, different perspectives. I think you have to be part of this. I mean, you have to. I think you want to be part of this system somewhat. Who's you? The artist? Whoever. Is or are we talking to be, about. Whoever is trying to be disruptive. I think uh -huh. like, want it to be. I don't know if you want to see change beyond your. Very immediate surrounding. Yeah. You want to like engage with the pleasure. Infiltrate. You want to engage with the system. Okay, let's all I acknowledge. Let's all acknowledge that the word disrupt, right, is just a comical buzzword at this point. That is more of like a joke to say than what it like is purported to mean, right? Yeah. I know that you're not saying. I know that you are aware of that. Like it just means commercial. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we've acknowledged that. I just can't like let that go in the show yeah. because it, it would yeah. feel weird to me. I know that you know, and I know that Darius knows, and I know that I know. But I just want to say for the record, for the eleven and a half thousand listeners, yeah, but, viewers. Actually. So but I mean, I guess it's you can be radical, and it doesn't it doesn't remove you from the potential. Of, I don't know. Um, very successful. What do you think? Actually, I think it's. Well, never mind. It's a well it's a be, be, be. You, you do, do not have to answer this. Yeah. But I'm going to throw this question yeah, out it's there. It's good to be asked this. They don't yeah. get asked it enough. Let me throw this out there to you. Because the way I see it, those things aren't necessarily. Exclusively, you know, not mutually exclusive. At the same time, they're not complementary. For instance, well, you know, you know what I'm saying. Like, for instance, I think someone who might be truly radical, and well, not even truly radical, but someone who's actually interested in creating a new type of art or expressing themselves in a way that basically is in dialogue with what's happening, but not in a way that's trendy. I guess, I guess my, my question, question is, what do you think about more when you make decisions? Do you think about, is someone pushing forward? What do you weigh more? You say, this person is pushing forward the language and dialogue of art 90% and they're 10% commercially. I have a 10% uh, chance of being able to sell out this person's work by the second time I show them. Do you take on that person, or does it have to be something like 50 /50? I mean, you have a roster, so that you can have, like, so, sort of, you have enough people that make commercially viable work that isn't necessarily, it's challenging on some levels, but maybe not. Why, 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 why wouldn't, wouldn't you, you want know? every artist it's on your like roster you to be pushing, pushing the dialogue forward? And ultimately, like we make the decision to be, we think that it's more important to be sustainable and support maybe one or two really, really radical artists that we even have a hard time selling than to not be in business and only. And support tech. I mean, then you have more of an audience. You, I think, potentially, like by compromising. You know, we're making the choice to like. But you don't view it as a compromise. No, it's not. Yeah. A, I mean. Because I mean, you I believe talking, in market forces. Yeah, I think that it's. You already so, said that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just a decision to like. Yeah. You know. I guess choose a broader audience. Or like have money. Let me decide that you. Let me change the subject a little. Bit. Let me just. Okay. But then to like decide that money will like help you make more 
change. Then you have to make compromises to get money. The thinking that you don't need to make change. I'd rather make change with money than not. Yeah, and if it's you obviously have way more impact, we have more visibility, and visibility comes from having the resources. At the same time, you can make a lot more money than we don't. Yeah. We make choices against making money all the time. Yeah. Okay. Let me, so the subject I'm about to do is, you still holding on to your sentence, Darius? Yeah. We will return to it later. Not yet. No, 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 it's not time for your sentence yet. I know. No, I'm just like, we I have a very different Oh, you, you want to comment on this before I change the subject? No, 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 I'm saying like, yeah, I had a long time, but this is interesting, so it's not like I'm like coming up with sentences. You're not just I, here waiting. No, you, no, no, I get it. I, it's actually more of a challenge. Yeah. I'm, I'm challenging you to hold on to it, because we will return to it in about 15 minutes, probably. Uh, but I'm going to change the subject. First, I'm going to plug in the power. Let me ask you, why do, the, why do these things die so quickly? I know you're an engineer. No, no, no. no. Um, no, no, I have a different question that's sort of related, and it, it applies to all of us, I think, I hope. Do you guys think that when you are making these choices that you're making, whether it's, so, there, sorry, just for a little more context, are you a designer at all, or are you, do you conceive of things yes. from scratch and kind of execute them at all? Uh, yes, but not in the design right, sense. Right, but just in the, in the like, visual sense. Yeah, not in the design sense, but in the, I, I've come up with an idea, I'm going to engineer this idea. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So do you guys feel that you have, because sort of what I'm about to ask is like, Mika's talking about this stuff as if this is what I'm about to say is a given. And I don't know that it is a given. At least for me, I don't think it's a given. I, I'm trying to um, do you guys feel you have a good graph or like you know what will succeed ahead of time and kind of what won't? Because like I feel like what Mika's saying is kind of like, well, we know like this is gonna sell, and we kind of know this isn't it. And like every time, like for instance, I make a film. So every time I make a movie, I'm kind of like, this rules. Right. This is gonna be the biggest thing I've ever done. It's gonna get a hundred million views right. and, a, and a, 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 it's going to sell out every movie theater yeah. and the next movie I make instead of making this one for $10,000 and asking everyone to work for free, next one I'm going to make for $10 million and everyone's going to walk away with, with like uh, the pay they deserve. Right, right, right. Um, so I, I, I don't know about it and that, that, does that make me stupid. What do you guys think? No, well, you I mean, as an individual, <laughs> it's different, right? Like, like if, if you're like an artist in the more like traditional form, oh, like, I make films. Like, sure, running a business is also in my life. And that is something such an artist too. But I feel like wait, I, you're saying a filmmaker is a business person? No, no, I'm saying like Nietzsche is also an artist. Right? Yeah. Well, like you're, you're artist. I'm talking about. I'm not talking about us as artists. I'm just talking about us as in a, the general sense, decision making entities. So you are someone who conceives of things and then makes a set of decisions. And after you've made that decision, do you think you can tell that the set of decisions you made will lead to success? Um, when you're building large software projects, yeah. usually no, because you're working with a huge team. Yeah, which is like impossible. And it's also basically, it's like you're building a house, but you basically have to build it so that anything that's added to it will be able to be added in the most efficient way yeah. possible. For whoever's going to be working on it after you have for everyone else. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah, yeah it's kind of crazy. Yeah. It's, um, do you... So, okay, so... so is, my answer, no, I guess. is there like um, kind of an overseer on these projects? Um, yeah, there's like the lead developer. The uh -huh. lead and do, do you communicate with these people directly? Yes, but ultimately you you still have to make your own decision, decision right? right? They don't micromanage you. Right. But okay, so for you though, yeah, ideally, ideally right? yeah. Um, but, but for you, so the when the lead developer or the lead engineer is competent and visionary or whatever you want to call them or like just good right then you probably feel like okay this will probably succeed yeah yeah and if they're sure. poor you think 
shit, let me just finish this as soon as possible, get paid and get out of here, because this probably will stay. Right. Well, let me just like everything else, it's just a matter of taste, right? Like, mm -hmm. Well, that's a good question. That's kind of what I'm asking. Like, like, how do you know when your taste aligns with the taste of the market that right. you're making decisions for? Yeah. Go for it. Go for it. No, I mean, to, I guess to answer your question, no, I've been very wrong before about what things that I thought would work. And for different reasons. Like, I thought that someone had such a strong, passionate, undeniable voice that people, like, wouldn't help but see what a force she was. Mm -hmm. and, but maybe they didn't like that force. Yeah, but who knows? Whatever. But I was so sure that, like, this would blow up so fast. And, it didn't. and then, conversely, like, I don't feel like God is so sick, such a sick that like, so conservative people that don't love this. It's like already being in that and it hasn't worked out. And then I don't just like, like the sense, like, you know, like the. But then there's also been times when you're like, uh, okay. Yeah, but then have there ever been times when you're like, you oh go, God, go, this is going, right. this is going really bad, and then it goes really well. Yeah, of course, sometimes. Oh no, but what about like ahead of time before anyone sees it, you're like, oh shit, this is going to be a bad show. And then people show up and it's like incredible. Never. That's never happened. <laughs> well, I mean. That's but, honestly but, never happened. But the two the two examples that you give are kind of the same thing. Do you have well, an example maybe, where maybe something not, was wildly more successful oh, than I mean, I've been like with artists that I've met before, I'm like, yeah, they're never going to make it. Or like, yeah, they're way too annoying to ever make it. And uh -huh. then they're way more successful than I am. So now That's we're getting deep time inside time. the mind of the <laughs> resentful and contemptuous Nika Markle, who wishes ill towards a quote unquote annoying <laughs> artist. So all the <laughs> annoying artists out there steer clear of the voodoo priestess Nika Markle, or should I say, get very close to her. Because if she thinks you're annoying and won't succeed, it's very likely you will. <laughs> Um, um, okay, Darius, what's your sentence? Oh, my sentence. In, in 2017, June 16th. In 2016, 2017. Right. Um, I will be, <laughs> um, I will be a, a farmer. A farmer? And a budding an artist. Uh, anarchist. Yeah. Okay, is this? I get it. Is is this a weird type of fan fiction you've just engaged in, <laughs> or do you truly mean this, Mika? Will you lean in? Yeah. It could be both, right? It could be both. Hey, could be. hey, hey! I open up and bleed. Yeah. Um, the notion of this show. Uh, is that we'll be telling you the truth of truths. And so far, every episode, people have opened up in a quite vulnerable way. But if someone were to come on this show and just spout out quote unquote lies, or as you like to call it, fan fiction, <laughs> then um, that would also be fine. Right, right. Yeah. So I look forward to your anarchist farm, and I hope that you can produce some non. You know, what do you guys think about GMOs, by the way? Oh, God. I think it's fine. Do you guys think it's a problem? What do you guys know about it? I don't know enough to talk about it. Yeah, you, um, you think it's a problem? You can be honest, you know. It, it, it depends on your perspective. So, like, some, some people who don't think it's a problem don't give a shit about the Earth, like, as, like, a natural thing. So there's, like, well, well Whatever it takes to feed us. But what about the fact that some GMOs, or a lot of them, deal with what you were talking about, and efficiency, right? But like a part of the goal of GMOs is that they like yield more, and that they potentially uh, cre create it so that when the crops come up, they don't like ravage the land as much as a lot of natural crops. <laughs> sure. <laughs> to me, GMOs is kind of like, like, like it's kind of like abortion, like, you know? like. I think, you know, abortion is like science coming up with something to deal with like a natural, maybe like issues that we might have, right? right? And it's not, a, it's not necessarily like, it's an intrusion on a natural process 
uh, in order to, you know, come up with the solution to problems. Right. All right. And that's what like GMOs are. And then people are against a lot of the time, you know. Well, some, some people are legitimately against GMOs just because they're GMOs for no other reason, just because it was done inside a lab. Right? Yeah, exactly. Well, well, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, it was a lab, but that's a problem. Yeah, so it's definitely like somewhat of a buzzword. Kind of. Like, in that sense. I mean, like, look, I don't, I'm not pretending to be the most informed. I certainly don't support, like, whatever corporate hierarchies or whatever like that, uh, crazy. I don't think corporations are people or whatever Mika is thinking about in her head right now. But um, but I understand what GMOs more or less are. And like, for instance, like, you know, they'll come up with a way to make um, certain crops. Um, and it, it, all you thousands of listeners viewing this right now, feel free to chime in and tell me I'm a fucking stooge, a corporate tool, a fucking Monsanto, a crow, crony, or whatever. But, um, you know, they'll find a way to come up with um, crops that um, are uh, bug resistant, that are resistant to strains of pestilence. And they don't have to spray pesticides on these crops. They don't have to poison the food because they've come up with a way of poisoning the bugs through the genome of the food without poisoning the humans. Right. And that is delightful. I mean, that's a solution to me. It's a solution to the to us whole host of problems, right? That we built up. Yeah, they're a problem. From the ground right. We created the pesticide problem. Right. To right. create to fix some solution. Now we have a better but solution. Why are you against them? Like, <clears throat> well, to me, it's not as simple. Like, um, so for me, like my whole problem is the closed system. People not thinking about like the earth and like just like the soil. So like a lot of these scientists, um, sure, like they might have a point. It's it's also like how much do you trust the government to like fix these plants? When yeah, but but the government isn't in charge of, um, I mean, they're in charge of regulating stuff, but like, you know, basically, if, if somebody can make a lot of money and it's not going to kill you, the government is going to pass it, the right. FDA is going to pass it, but it's private corporations that come up with the research and the development to, to make functional advances in genetically modified plants, whatever, it's boring, oh, we can it's move not, on. It's not boring, but it's really important too What's, because it is inevitable. Yeah. It, I mean, what difference? I mean, the difference though between abortions and GMOs is that there aren't a lot of corporations benefiting from abortion. There's not so much money behind it. There's a lot of corporations benefiting from GMO. I'm, I'm just making right, right. Abortion, so, so it's like it's more of a moral question, but this is like more than an industry. I think they're both well, but see, the thing is, the the, the attack on GMOs. Is it is a more is a more question. question. It's not like small time small time yeah. farmers yeah. are like paying lobbyists to be like, fuck, they're ruining our farming business. Small time farmers like GMOs. I know, but the reason it even exists that this development is being pushed forward. Yeah. No, it's, for, uh, it's more like a cultural issue. But it is. It has to do with the, it has to do with crop yield. It has to do with providing food cheaply to like potentially starved populations, and it has to do with this whole pushback on it. That's kind of like uh, this, this is more. We are modifying. We're fucking up the natural qualities of this fruit or of these plants, right. and we're like making this. We don't know what effect this is going to have on our bodies because we're fucking making it in a lab. It's not nature's way. It becomes this moral issue. Yeah, but that's, I mean, but that's almost like icing on the cake. I think that the whole progress of like farms is like all... It's always been this sort of like pollination, cross-pollination, just because it was done out in the field, not in the lab. It's like... No, but I think it's, it's like completely led by kings of industry. It's like well, money making. That's, that, uh... That like actual cross plants. Yeah, that's different because in the lab you can just like create 
something and inject it into the practice. No, and that's just, different than like, I don't, oh, I'm going to take this train of sage. And this train I see. Of sage. I don't find and those. those two, I don't find those to be qualitatively different. But I don't have any problem with. I, yeah, but I hear you, Darius, but totally I, that's, see, that's where I think the, the moral question lies. Like, I don't think those things are that different. Like, cross-pollinating, cross-breeding, like, natural things with other natural things versus, like, coming up with some synthetic thing that basically has a lot of the genetic qualities, I mean, like, it's it healthy, it's, and then putting it in there. I think what's yeah. more, like, much more dubious are just the motivations of... To make money. Okay, yeah, so okay. then, so then, do you think there would be like? So you think everything is about getting as cheap as possible, and it's not about. So if we lived, like, so if we lived in some, I don't think, that, that think about what, what you're saying, Lomi. Okay, let's go back to this abortion analogy because it's probably off the mark on a few different levels. Yeah. But let's, I mean, I'm just thinking about it on a, as like a moral analogy. So let's come up with an alternate universe, right, where women's rights, a woman's right to choose and abortion was sold by, as a, as a concept, as a moral concept, was sold as a completely celebrated moral imperative by uh, deacons of industry because they understood that unwanted children lead to X, Y, Z things that are bad for business. Yeah. Then do you think that there would be a whole would have a, a critique of the insidiousness of uh, the abortion lobby? I don't think so. But you're kind of saying there would be. It's, yeah. It's, I mean, your attack on... I agree with you that like, it, Monsanto as a buzzword is a problem, not just because of the fact that they're trying to modify each other, because they're a corporation. Like, I don't know what they're doing to, like, our food and to the mom and pop farmers and to like, like everything seems like poison. Like, you know, people talk about this shit and they don't really know what they're talking about because they just like basically yeah. are anarchists. Well, the, thing really. is the, motive, the motives in this case don't actually matter, I think, which is where really where I'm going to say that. But I think what matters is like the consequences, like what happens when people eat this food, what are the long term effects? Hey, 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 what the fuck are the long term effects of this? Ooh, ooh, I love this. Ooh, do, 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 do. I'm, I'm playing, see, this is another reason why it's good that we're on air video. Like, I'm playing on my, my uh, mobile device, my smartphone, uh, which we all do uh, 10 to 12 hours a day. And everybody, oh, I love this. Oh, cool. Candy Crush. Oh, I'm casting Tinder. Oh, I'm casting and then, like, okay, it's yeah. like seven and a half years from now, we're all fucking doing, we're all dead. The mortality rate is fucking 39 years old in fucking Silicon Valley. Everyone's dying at 32. You're dead soon, Darius. You're on your way. I got a little more time. Yeah, <sighs> I agree. I don't have to. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But where, where are all the attacks on smartphones? Because we don't know what the hell smartphones are doing to us. We don't know. I have well, a lot I mean, better attacks. So the reason people are against propagation is because it's just too close. It's too close to like genetic modification. People are already threatened by that. Yeah, I, I think that's true. Cool. Cool. It's, it's, really it's basically the same. Yeah, I agree that there isn't the same size. That's why it's, that's what it's just Human life, that's why people don't like abortions. Like, like, but phones, smoking, whatever. Well, abortions are a lot different. You're just straight up killing something. Like, straight up. Yeah. Well, you're no modification. Well, no, you are you killing something, though? Are we going to go down that path? <laughs> I mean, we can. We can. Are you pro life, Darius? It's not my choice. It's not your choice. Yeah. yeah. As a man. Yeah, that's not your choice in, at all. In my opinion. So you're pro choice. Yeah. Right. Because I have to be one of them, right? Well, you, you have, have to be one of what? A, 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 a former fetus who made it? No, just like there's so many false binary things. Hey, man, that's code. That's the code world we're living in. Yeah, yeah right. I have to like, Zero or one. Yeah. Choose, choose yeah. what side are you on? Which side are you on? I like zero. Yeah. I like zero. Um, maybe genetic modification See, it scares me for sure. I have anxiety, but I when I first moved to here, it'll be a class issue for sure. Though. Yeah, everything's a class issue. 
But um, when I first moved to LA, I liked this girl. All right, I liked this girl, and she started talking about like body mods and stuff, and how you know, like like yeah. installing chips and yeah. like doing like putting stuff in their temple and like. I don't know what they, you can yeah yeah you what can, about well, cancer. Cool, whatever. All I'm saying is, uh, what'd you say? This is the your power. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, there's no percent. But I can. Is it red? It's red. Eight seconds. I can charge Eight you. Minutes. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Yeah. You got a charger? Yeah. Go grab it. Go grab a charger. I mean, no, 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 I'm low too. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 No, no I, I start, start you in the middle. There's only there's only eight minutes left in the show, guys. So actually, it will probably work out. You don't want to chance it. Where is this? Right there. Okay. So I don't know. It just freaked me out when this girl was saying all these goals that she had for just like you know like improving her uh, body through like basically we just slide that close here. Uh, well, I feel like I'm not a big fan of plastic surgery. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, it's just a and, um, yeah and class. what do you guys uh, think about uh, race as a construct? <laughs> I was just reading sure. about this today, actually. Yeah, weren't we sure. all? Haven't we all been reading about this because of this? Uh, today's June 16, 2015. And for the record, there's been a bit of a scandal going on in our country, America, right? Um, so. Uh, there was a woman, what's her name? Rachel, Rachel's. Rachel Dol Dolezal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and she, in the last uh, 10 years, has purported to be black, but in actuality, she was born white. Yeah. Um, but then today, you, and, you know, she was basically exposed on television, and someone asked her, like, like why did you bother to make it a ribbon cutting ceremony? ceremony? And she's like, he's sick. And then the reporter showed her a picture of a black man. And he said, is this your father? And she's like, yeah, why, you know? And then he said, are you African American? And then she said, what do you mean? She's like, he's like, this is not your father. We know this is not your father. And then she's like, I'm leaving, you know? <laughs> so that was how it all started a few days ago. Yeah, and, and, and all the other stuff, she went to Howard University and she grew up with four uh, adopted uh, black children as her siblings. Oh. No, I'm just saying, saying like, you know, and there's context. There's, there's context, whatever. Yeah. I, I, to me, it's clear that the woman is deranged. It's clear to me yeah. that the woman is obviously psychotic. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously the problem here is the lie, right? Right. Is that, right. That's the big problem. Like, right. the fact that she is involved in the black community and, like, right. doing all these things and... It's fine. It's chill. Yeah. Just don't pretend to be black. Right. right. But uh, but then I, I read this article. I think the same one you read. Yeah. Or maybe I don't know. But what did you ever say? Well, what do you think you were saying? I didn't read about her. I was reading something on the Bolshevik side about the history of capitalism. And and go like, on, you anarchist farmer. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was basically saying. That like race as a social construct in like in ancient times, like, uh -huh. antiquity, mm -hmm. basically like didn't really like influence any like class distinctions. Right. And it was mm -hmm. basically came about after like slavery was sort of like an economically viable thing, and then you would like oh conquer other nations. Mm -hmm. uh, Starting in like 15th century, uh -huh. so it, it was sort of like a holdover of like European settler colonialism. So they're saying that when, for instance, like the Romans or something um, got slaves from Africa, yeah. or Hannibal got slaves from Europe, right? That the uh, color, the skin color distinction, didn't didn't really contribute. Yeah. To the sort of social stratification. Right. It didn't contribute to implied superiority. Right. Okay. Got it. Whereas, got like, it. whereas, like, I don't know, like, coming from like philosophy of European settler colonialism. Yeah. Um, slavery sort of came first, and then like within like the epic of like Christianity and yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. destiny, they needed a way to like rationalize it, and by saying, okay, we're gonna make 
the slave owner was Christian and all the like yeah, yeah. had in a, in inalienable rights and all this stuff. Like they're actually probably just inferior anyway. And yeah. same uh sort of like rationale was used for women. Right. Uh -huh. I hope okay, there's all these fair. outstanding white men, they were Christians, they were good fathers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But my daughter still doesn't deserve to get an education because she has vagina. yeah certain physical yeah. limitations. Yeah. 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 I read a sidebar article. <laughs> I read a uh, well. I mean, I guess we can talk more about articles and stuff. But maybe we can also talk about like you as a black man. Oh God! What do you think? I think I'm gonna get shot soon. Well, yeah, that, well, look, right, isn't that the thing? Like, uh, a lot of black men and black people get shot by cops. Women, too, actually. Black people, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's, and that's something that, Tackled and punched and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, and actually the 12-year-old kid in Cleveland that just got uh -huh. run down. All right, yeah, yeah, the yeah. toy. Mirror rice. Right, right, yeah. Um, the cop uh, just got charged. So Good, he's going to die, right? He's going to trial. Yeah. Which is yeah, which he yeah, deserves it's, too. It's in the right direction. It it should be part of the course, right? right, right. 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 But I think that's in the air, right? Because uh, black people in America have to suffer through all of these horrifying injustices just because of the who they are, right? right. Born, and then this woman is sort of like a white woman, and she's like, "I'm black," right. like God. I'm African studies professor, right, I'm right. NAACP, right, right, right. and then I assume black people would be like, are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. Like, bitch, you are crazy. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting because, like, like light-skinned black people have been, like, trying to pass. Right, like, that's the thing. Years, and then this lady's like, well, okay, I'm going another way. Yeah, well, the insidious thing, of course, is that she didn't have to deal with all of the, like, you know, the disadvantages uh, put onto black people in this country. Right, right, right. And then she's just kind of reaping the sort of like, uh, whatever she can reap from that status. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's what, like, I mean, that's in the air. I think this would be way less crazy or like way less attention on it if there wasn't this deserved uh, focus on all the injustices experienced by black Americans, and also this other angle that somehow doesn't have to do with black Americans, which is the whole like trans being trend like, trans is trending the last six months, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. just like trans rights. And this is like this weird crossroads of all that stuff. Yeah, like they did so many. It's not transgender, but transracial, you know, right. and all this shit. Right, right, right. I don't know. I guess we're getting confused here, but, but I mean, it's, not, it's, it's interesting. I mean, we could talk literally for three hours about this, but yeah, there's so much to tease out. Yeah. So the show is actually basically over, which is insane. It doesn't all have to be teased out. Though. Let, Let me make sure someone's here, because I'd like to keep talking if you guys are down. Yeah. Let me make sure the next person's here, and, and otherwise just sign off. Um, what's up, Rai? Uh, are you here to do the next show? All right, cool. So we're going to wrap up. What's the name of your show? What's your, what's your, Dirty Laundry TV. So, is there, is there a room for new shows at my shop now? Yeah. I don't I'm think so. Yeah. I put them first, I guess. I mean, I don't think there's, I don't you think there's that? room. I mean, there might be room contact, someone I else. I'm just a DJ. I don't want any shows. Guys, wow. I wish we could do a part two, and maybe we will. Maybe. Because we were really getting cut off at such a inopportune time. So, any last thoughts on anything we've discussed? Let's we'll start with you, Darius. Um, Real quick. So, apparently, there's yeah. more variation uh, within races than. Yeah. 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 That's, that is cool. And that's very quite unexpected, right? Well, I, like I was saying, it's a construct, right? right, right. I think actual scientists right. and social scientists have been saying that for at least, I think, 75 years. They've been saying <laughs> that in looking at 
genetic makeup, right. race is literally a distinction that was projected onto people due to like whatever. I'm not saying anything new. From, from the upper classes. Yeah, yeah, it's just a power structure thing that has to do with sort of like differentiation through visible traits, right. physical right. traits, yeah. and actually has nothing to do yeah, with probably, anything. Yeah. Right. Financially motivated. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think race so, is a huge like, thing in this country. And if you look at like a, I mean, if you look at other countries, if you look at other countries, everything is driven by um, economics, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Race, years ago. race for Europe is still a massive problem. It's a thing too, but it all has to do with education, social class, economics. It's, it's worked out very differently there. there. Americans are thinking all this stuff, how they open it's the constant mess. Uh, hey, that's what we do here. Open up and please. Yes. This is not a mess. This is a. And the last stops for you, Mia. No. No. Okay. And, then, and the last stops that's for me. God, I'm just so excited to be sharing this show with you guys. And uh, not you, but listeners and viewers. And uh, I'm excited to have such uh, insightful and open guests every week. This has been Open Up and Bleed. I have joined. Uh, I was joined today by, I have been joined today by, today I've been joined by, Mika Marple, local luminary, Darius, without a uh, recent transplant, and um, I'm Eugene Conranco. Tune in next Tuesday at 9 p.m. We'll have a new guest who will come and open up and leave. Thank you. Tell your friends.